Hello guys, and welcome back to another M Creator tutorial. So today what I'm going to be covering is basically the uh, how the fluid, forge fluid basically works. And I've created a couple different uh, blocks here. We have a general machine that basically just has a tank that we will basically run things from if we um, have the machine on. And you can turn the machine off by sneaking and basically right clicking and it requires fuel to basically function so with this little dot right here what i've done is i've made it so we can basically place a block on the top here however um, the procedure when we right click on it it requires the um, block to not be placed directly on that so that's basically the tank for where we're going to get the power or the fuel from uh, this could be a pipe it could be anything you can basically just passing it from tank to tank in order to get to this particular device here uh, this is just basically a holding tank that I basically created for the actual machine so uh, let's go over here and we will just quickly place down couple of these so we can place down the machine and we're going to place down a tank on top here and then what we're going to do is we're just going to use some lava and we're going to place it into that tank here as you can see it will be full and this is starting to fill up so uh, if you haven't watched my progress tutorial like my progress bar tutorial that's basically how the script basically runs as it's using the progress bar for that as you can see we've lost one bar from the tank up here from actually filling up the machine so now all we need to do is we're going to actually use some bone meal to actually we don't need bone meal this is actually a bone meal machine so as soon as we click it on as you can see all the the wheat starts growing and it will continue to do that until it runs out of uh, fuel. So let's just kind of remove some of this. And we'll just keep basically um, growing some of these things. And it will eventually... Yeah, so it's already down two bars. So it's been growing. Now it's not dependent on all the blocks that it does grow. It's just uh, on a timer. But as you can see, it's still running. So eventually, over time, if we just leave this to run, uh, this bar right here will actually go down. Uh, we'll just let it sit for a little while, and then it should, yep. Yeah. So it's updated. We haven't done anything. It's just going to slowly deplete. And then once this is finished depleting, this will start to depleting, and then there will be no power to the actual device. So that's basically how it's working. It's going from the tank up here pushing it down to the tank down here and then it's basically allowing it to run if it has a certain amount of fuel inside the actual the machine itself so let's go into mcrater and there's a few procedures and stuff that i'll cover um, i'll try to explain things as best as i can and um yeah so we'll cover the tank and the machine and you know some other stuff all right so let's go in there so i have this uh workspace laid out pretty easy there's the machine code and then there is the tank so the tank procedure and the tank itself is in this one and then the GUI has the progress bar stages as well as the actual fluid uh, fluid GUI uh, menu so we'll start with the GUI because it's kind of the easiest thing to cover and as you can see we're just using a simple item or pardon me, uh, we're using the some text. So this is basically what we're just displaying the text as. We have a background item. So we're, we're basically displaying things. And then if we zoom in, you might notice that the things are offsetted just a little bit. That's because with um, GUIs, when you're using not the rendered background, things are offsetted just a little bit to the le the right hand side. So that's why I have the images over on this side. So as you can see, I have I'm using all different types of images, each for one for each stage of the tank being filled, and then in those uh, we have conditions for displaying the actual images. So the first bar, the lowest one, is using the progress bar one. 
uh, for the condition and then we are using two and such for the other ones all the way up to procedure five. So they're named the same so it's a little bit easier to follow. Uh, if we open these, uh, what we have is a very simple procedure. What we're doing here is we're going to take an if statement, test if there are a range between the two values. So what we want to know is how full the tank for fuel is and basically if it's between a certain range. So in our case, uh, what we're doing is we're testing if the range for the first stage is uh, the get level of tank. So this is basically getting the current level of the fuel. And then it's testing if the get capacity is divided by six. So six is basically, so nothing would be zero and then we're testing for one right so we want to test if it's between um basically our zero and one so what we're doing is we're going to test if it is greater than and divided by six so this is only one sixth of the actual fuel tank capacity it's a little hard to explain if it's only five bars that you have you have to actually go over one extra bar to basically count for the first stage. So basically we're just dividing that by six and then we're getting the capacity of it. So the capacity divided by six will be our minimum value and we wanna test if it's greater than that. After what we're doing is we're going to test if the maximum number, so the, again our tank capacity and then we're going to divide that by six and then we're multiplying it by two so basically what this will do is we'll take this value and then multiply it by two and that'll be our our roof for our actual value that we're testing for so again minimum value maximum value and that creates a range so if it is within that particular uh, area for value then what we're doing is we're returning true. If it's not, then we're just returning false. Uh, to find these blocks, what you can do is you can go, you'll actually be using a lot of these blocks in the procedure, so it's best to kind of familiarize yourself with where they're located. So you want to grab a if statement, a logic, grab a light blue operator, right click on the equal sign, and, and then you want to move it into inline inputs. And then, or pardon me, I think it's um, extend inputs, pardon me. And then what you want to do is you want a dark blue operator. So back to logic, grab this one, and then select the equal sign. And then you want to go greater than. And then what you want to do is go to energy and fluid tanks. And then what you want to do is scroll down until you see the ones that are for leave it's these ones right here. So capacity of tank, and then what you wanna do is make sure that it's for tank one. And then if you want for basically the get level of tank, then you want this block right here. And again, you want for tank one. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna drop the level of tank right here. And we're testing if it's greater than, not equal or greater than, that's important. And then what we're doing is we're going back to fluid and storage and we're going to get the capacity. So again, this one right here, uh, we're making sure that it's for any direction because it's not really required for a specific direction. So any direction will be what we use. We're getting a math operator from the math tab and then we're placing it down here. And then we're going to select the slash, which is basically means divide. And then we're going to basically drop our capacity and then we need a number, so we're going back to math, and then we're gonna drop that and set this number to six. Now that's gonna basically go ahead and divide the capacity by six. So now we can just duplicate this, and we're going to drop that down here, change the middle operator to equal to or less than, and then we're going to basically change the math a little bit behind that. So we're gonna grab another math block place it down here. We're going to set this to the asterisk, which means multiplication. And then we're going to drag that to the first part. And then we're going to drag that back to our operator. And then what we want to do is multiply that by the number of the next stage. So basically we want to know 
if it's uh, this plus or multiplied by two. So that's basically that. For the return blocks, what you want to do is you want to go to uh, flow control and then you want the light blue return value. You're going to place that down here and then you're going to replace or add a logic value. Make sure to set it to true for that one. And then you can just duplicate that and set it to false. So that's basically how you create this one here. Many of the other progress bars are the same. I'll cover them anyways, just to kind of show you how it's set up. So that's the stage one. Your stage two for the thing is basically the stage, the second option. We're multiplying it by two and then we're multiplying the other one by three. So again, the operators are the same, greater than and equal to or less than. We're making sure that it's divided by six so we have the same progress. And this is basically counting our stage between our progress. So this is between value of two multiplied this, and then this is our, our third value. So this is where the second checkpoint for how much we're checking for the fuel. Uh, the third one, is three and four for that and same exact thing as the second procedure fourth is four and five so you would do this each time that you want to add the extra progress bar and then the fifth one is a little bit different it's uh, testing from five and then we're just getting the maximum capacity for the entire um, entire uh, tank itself so that's basically what we're doing here rather than multiplying and dividing we're just getting the exact same uh, the, the total capacity of the tank and then we're doing the exact same thing for the return blocks and stuff throughout the uh, procedures so that's basically that uh, each procedure has the uh, display condition so that's basically that so that's the GUI Let's take a look at the tank now. So there are a couple procedures for the tank. The first one that we're going to look at is the block itself. And there's a few things that we need to actually make sure that we have set up in the block in order to be able to use fluid storage. So a lot of these settings up to, I believe, let's see here, all these look fine, advanced properties. Uh, when you're using the tank for the procedure, you will need a tick update so it can basically push the fuel over to another block. So um, you can do this either randomly or through uh, tick procedures. I think it doesn't matter as long as you do have it ticking. So the next thing is most important. You want to enable the block, uh, basically block, block entity type. So you want to enable this. And then what you want to do is you want to go ahead and uh, set up your GUI and stuff like that. So if you're connecting to the GUI, then you want to make sure that it opens the GUI when you right click on it. And then you basically want to bind the right click to the actual block. Uh, for the storage, I think we only need one slot. I actually don't think there is any actual slot so we might even be able to just set that to zero um yeah because we don't we don't actually have a slot in the gui do we yeah there's no slot so we don't actually need a item slot for that so if you're using item slots then you'll have to set that up but in general uh in the in the general condition you don't actually need a slot if you're not using slots uh, also because it doesn't have an item so we don't really need to drop it uh, the next thing that we're doing is we're basically going to specify the enable fluid storage so we want to check this box if we're going to use fluid storage we are using fluid storage to run the procedures with so we actually need to make sure that this is checked uh, the maximum fluid uh, capacity, it says here that uh, it's basically one bucket is 1,000 um, points. So that's basically how I have it set up here. And what we can do is we can uh, adjust this value to anything that we want for how much the block itself can store the fuel. You can lower the number if you want to basically make it something like... Uh, something to transport the fuel by. You can use um, 
higher numbers for tanks or even a thousand for a tank, whatever. What we're using for the tank itself is exactly 1000 points. So then we have restrict accept fuels. So base uh, accepted fuel. So basically what this does is it allows us to specify only a specific type of fuel. Uh, this could be handy if you're making pipes that only transport lava, water, or any custom uh, liquid type. So you can specify the type of um, liquid that you're basically going to be transporting. There's a few different options with vanilla, which is flowing water, water. Water is basically is the stationary water. Uh, flowing lava, which is the flowing one, and then lava, which is the stationary one. So in this, what we're using lava is just for regular fuel. And we've basically specified that only the tank can accept lava. Uh, triggers, uh, we have the uh, update tick. So this is basically the procedure for the update tick. And what this is doing is it's going to basically run the procedure. Uh, we're testing if the tank value is basic or tank level is equal to or greater than 10. This is important. We're testing for any direction. So we're going to be testing basically if we can send 10 to a, a location below. So what we're doing is after we're doing that, what we're doing is we're going to test if the get tank level and then we're offsetting the location where we're going to be sending it. And then we're testing if it is facing the, the side that we're basically going to be accepting the fuel from. So the block below, if the top side can basically accept the fuel from the top. So if it can set, select the fuel from the top, then we're testing if it is equal to or less than, and then we're testing the value for this. So if it, the tank capacity of the block is located at the same location that we're sending it, uh, minus 10. So again, this is how much we're sending. We're sending 10. We want to make sure that the block can receive 10. So if the capacity is the same like full capacity minus 10 so if it's less than or equal to then we want to basically send that particular value after what we're doing is we have a local variable here we can call it whatever we want i have it set to fill value and basically we're going to test again uh test fill 10 and then we're going to select the coordinates of the block that we want to send it to so this is the uh, one block below, uh, we're using the Y to test for the relative location. So we're testing one block below the tank and then we're testing for the side and then we're going to test basically if it can accept lava. So that's basically where the lava part comes in. I think there's a few other different options in here, those same options that you want. And then basically what this will do is it will basically return the amount that's filled. So even if this is, um, basically the amount that is less than 10. So if it's the capacity is lower than 10, like from basically filling up, what this is going to do is it's basically going to get the amount that it's going to be sending and getting the amount that it returns when it adds it to that particular thing. It doesn't add it just yet. It's just basically testing if the value can go into it and what it basically returns. So then we're using that local variable to take the value. We're gonna remove, drain the amount that we actually want to send from our main block, our tank, and then we're gonna put it into the machine. So this is basically how we put it into the machine. We're just using the local variable, setting the location, making sure it's the side that we're basically testing for, and then the type of liquid that we're moving it into that particular thing. And that's all you really need to do to send it any particular direction. You can offset the cords different directions to send the uh, the fluid to different directions. Forge energy is very similar to this method. Um, it has a few extra blocks, but you could use the exact same script only with the um, energy and it would work pretty much the same way. So that's basically that. Uh, if you have any questions, um, let me know and I'll try to clarify them in the comments. Uh, if not, then I'll like try to make a comment uh, doing frequently asked questions about this particular procedure, how it works. But in short, what it's doing is it's just basically getting the value that it returns. When it returns, it's basically adding the 10 plus the um, 
amount that is stored where this block is basically getting it from. So we're testing for the machine itself and it's adding the 10 to it. And then we're adding that to the value of the fill value. And then we're basically subtracting that. So that's basically what it's doing there. All right, so that's that part. And there's another procedure uh, under tank and right click vent. Right here, we're basically testing when the player right clicks on a block, we're testing if provided block is equal to the custom tank. So this is if we're right clicking on their custom tank. And then what we're doing is we're testing if we're, we're holding a bucket. And what this will do is it'll basically allow us to cancel out the event so we don't open the GUI. And then what we're going to do is we're basically going to add the fuel to that particular thing. Now this one is a little bit different. Uh, we're basically getting the tank level and testing if the tank level is less than the full capacity. And then what we're doing is we're basically going to uh, s test the filling for 1000 and then we're going to get the re remainder of the um, basically the, the value that is can be sent to that particular block. Same thing that we did with the other procedure, and then we're just going to send that maximum amount that we we're actually sending out of that 1000. So again, um, this is the exact same thing as when we're sending it to the machine. Uh, it's going to try sending 1000. If the capacity is somewhere below that, then it's only going to send that amount. The other amount that's left over will basically just not exist. So. Uh, in this particular example, at least. You could have it stay in the other block uh, from the tank when it gets sent though. So that's why we had a little bit different than the other one. And then we're just basically filling the tank location with lava. And that's basically all that we're doing here. We're adding some sound effects so it makes it sound pretty. And then we're basically setting the main hand uh, to an empty bucket so we can basically um, consume the fuel itself. So that's that one. The last thing that we have is the machine itself. So again, a lot of these properties all along up until the advanced uh, will work exactly the way that you need to set it up. So anything that you change is perfectly fine. Most machines do require a tick rate though. Uh, it's just the way that you need things to actually run. So uh, make sure that it has at least something to tick with. Enable the MBT so you can or the uh, block entity so you can actually make it do things and then you want to open the fuel for the actual GUI. This will allow you to see how much fuel is actually in it. Select your GUI that you want for the fuel. You don't actually need these values again unless you have slots. So if you have a slot uh, like one slot then you want to set this value to one. Uh, if you uh, want to drop the items which is probably a good idea then you want to enable that for that but outside of that you don't really need it if you don't have slots like in this case. Uh, fluid in energy storage. Now this one is a little bit less for the total capacity. As you saw in the um, GUI uh, the total the tanks had a capacity of 1000 but it would only send about one-fifth of uh, the actual fuel into the block below and that's because we have the value set to 200 for the capacity of this tank so it's only going to be sending 200 at the total into the machine at any given time so that's basically that we've enabled it we've set our lava as our fuel you can set this to anything really but um, it's what we're using for the fuel for the pipes so we want to make sure that it can accept the lava Triggers, we have the machine update tick. Uh, this is just a really simple procedure I put together. Uh, it's not too, too complicated, but I'll cover it over just to kind of show you what how it works. So the state is an MBT variable that we're using for the block and we're testing if it's on. Uh, it's a string variable, so it, it depends on what the output for the string is. And then what we're doing is we're testing if the, the level of the tank is basically greater than five. So each time the tick, the block ticks, it's going to remove five fuel from the capacity of the tank. So you can make the fuel last longer by lowering this number, but uh, we want to basically test if the this is our, how much we're gonna be taking out. 
So we want to make sure that this is consistent throughout the actual procedure. So the other thing that we're doing is we're going to set the local variable again. This is our drain value. So this is our local variable that we're using for that. Then what we want to do is test the drain mount for this same value as this one right here. And we're going to return the value to the, the actual local variable so we can use it later on. After which we're basically draining the return value that we got here for the block for the machine itself. Now comes a little bit of the tricky part. What we have is a couple different uh, local variables, uh, pause X, pause Z, and pause Y. We're then offsetting the location for the machine. So it's uh, basically setting the relative location of the block itself, minus two. So it uh, allows us to offset it to a very specific location. And then what we're doing is we're going to basically just run a couple of repeaters and change the uh, coordinates for the X and Y, or pardon me, X and Z location. So what we're doing is we're testing down here for the block if it has the um, block data for, or block, block state, if it has the block state of age equal to less than seven. So this is basically a plugin that I have. It's um, not sure if I can show what plugins I have. Uh, I can open up MCritter again though. Just give me a sec. So if we go to preferences, yeah, that, that's how we get there before. So plugins. And then under here, we have the block state procedures. I'll link to this down below. You will need this to actually run this particular procedure. So what it basically does is allows you to use the different block states for things like crops, uh, doors, and stuff like that. You can get the properties of those values. So we're basically using that particular plugin to uh, test if the age of the the any crop that has the the block state of age is less than seven now most crops actually only have up to seven so what we're doing is we're basically testing for the maximum the total growth age of the thing if it's less than that number then what we want to do is we want to basically set the number property and then we're set, selecting age we're setting the all the coordinates to the relative location and then we're going to basically select age and then multiply that or pardon me add that by one and that's basically increasing the number of the age of the crop by one in a sense basically growing the crop within a certain area now this is running for a um, area two blocks below the actual machine so that's why we had it in the exact location that we were running the machine from and then what we're doing is we're basically just uh, setting the area so minus two and then it's running five times so we'll go five plus five on X and then plus five on Z so we'll cover that entire area uh, two blocks around the entire machine itself including underneath it and it basically adds this property to the the crops that are underneath it basically in a sense growing the crops so that's basically that uh, then there is the right click event for the machine now provided block entity this is basically if you're right clicking on the um, the block so this we're testing for the machine and then we're testing if we're sneaking now if you wanted to actually fix the issue with the um, particular item when we're right clicking with a tank on it what we would want to do is we would want to also specify um, a few other things so we want to basically go ahead and test if the main hand item in the player players inventory is equal to you can also use tags as well uh, equal to so logic right operator test for that and then we want to test for the Minecraft component. And then we're going to select our tank itself. And then what we can do is we can just cancel the event and it will cancel out if we're trying to right click on the block with a particular block. Now, if we have something in our inventory that is not error, 
So we can test if um, the, I think what we can do is go ahead and just set that to error. And then we can add a not statement right here. So we're basically testing if the main hand is not error, then basically we can cancel the event and then we'll be able to place any block on it. I'm pretty sure that would work. I haven't tried it, so let's actually quickly try that and we'll see if that works. So that's basically the procedure, no generation conditions like the other blocks as well. And then we'll just hop in game quickly and see if that uh, particular script actually fixed the issue. All right, so it was a little bit of a different co uh, code to basically get the uh, script working. So if we right click with uh, an empty hand, it, we can turn on the machine or off. And if we basically un sneak then we can basically open up the GUI and if we sneak while pressing down the um, basically right clicking with a block in our inventory or any item then it's not going to basically run the event so that's basically how that is set up uh, I think Minecraft already has a default condition when you sneak and right click it will um, basically cancel out opening GUIs and stuff like that so in general that's base or cancel out basically block actions. So that's basically how that's set up uh, to basically see the changes that I've made. We'll just go into the program and then what I've done is I'm just testing if we're sneaking and then what I'm doing is getting the number of the items in the main hand and we're testing if that is equal to zero. Basically if it's empty and then what we're doing is we're canceling the event. Now this is required to make sure the GUI doesn't actually open, but this is required to make sure that we can actually place blocks and stuff like that. Well, that we can actually toggle the machine on and off. The sneaking itself is the layer that actually allows us to place the blocks and stuff. That's on Minecraft's end. So that's basically what we're just testing if it's sneaking. And then we're testing if the value is equal to an empty hand and then we're canceling the about event and then we're basically setting the machine state to on or off so that's basically that um i did try it with a tag but that didn't work so i can just delete that now all right so that's basically it um i will cover forge energy in the near future uh it's basically the exact same thing just a little bit different with the um blocks that you need for basically running it but it's not too much different if you're new to my channel don't forget to subscribe comment down below rate the video and click that little notification button to stay notified and i will see you guys next time thanks for watching peace out